thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Hallelujah. All right. Oh, we're waiting for him. Let me go. You'll soon be here with us. But before you come, I'll just share a thought with us before he comes. Hallelujah. All right. Open Bibles with me to First John. First John 2. First John 2. And I'll read from verse 12 to 14. First John chapter 2, verse 12 to 14. Okay, I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven. I've forgiven you for his name's sake. Verse 13, I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you, little children, because you have known the father. I've written to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I've written to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the wicked one. Now, that scripture is very important. Now, when somebody is a babe or a child in Christ, scripture defines for us who is a babe. The kind of Christian is called a babe. And 1 Corinthians 3 describe that to us. Now, 1 Corinthians 3, the first part of it is, a, is part of chapter 2. That means it's, it's a passage. But we put it to, chap to chapters, you see, from verse 1 to 2 of chapter 3, is still part of the passage of chapter 2. So here it says in verse, in verse 3, I mean, chapter, chapter 3, verse 1 here, and I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal. So here Paul is talking about the fact that these people, they are carnal. They are considered to a spiritual people, meaning that their state of life is that they can, there are things that they cannot contain. So, because when you say well, walking noise of life, Peter encouraging, desiring, is something of the word of God that may grow thereby. So that means that we are going to go from a, baby, a place of being a baby in Christ to becoming people that Bible calls of young men. Forget about the gender, just look at the terminology. And then to maturity. So maturity is fatherhood. That's just what he's talking about that place. Now, in that sense, that he said that um, I, I could not speak to you as a spiritual people, but as to Kana, as to babes in Christ. So when Paul was, to, I mean, when Paul was writing about being babes in Christ, who are babes in Christ, Paul described them, said, I fed you with milk. Because you're feeding, we are feeding the frequency of the expression of newness of life. Shall I repeat that? Your feeding has fed the frequency of what you are going to express. Are you doing? So, in working in of life, people are put at different frequency or different expression of that life based on where they are. So, if I toddler or let's say a baby in Christ, there will be a dimension that life you are going to be expressing. And there will be other dimension that you are going to be shut down in. Are you doing? So, that's very powerful to understand. So, I fed you with milk and not with solid food. So, Paul, they bring fed with milk, not with solid food because of where they are. For until now, you were not able to receive it. So, some of us are not receiving a higher dimension of that line because we're not able to receive things in that line. The position that I mentioned yesterday about the fact that some people, the issue they might have be an adulterer that has to do with clothes and shoes that they would need to give it out. Amen. Some people have issues with that. I've seen that I asked, well, why are you not in church? So I have no clothes to wear. I have no clothes to wear. I go for meetings that the clothes I wear on Saturday is what I wear on Sunday morning. Can I ask how you are? Many times on Sunday morning. Not that you can just feel that let me wear a second time and don't wash it. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. So, do you get the point? So, is that an issue? When we are growing up, who is thinking about your clothes? I know the funny thing, you are the one that is simply looking at you. People are not really looking at you. Are you with me at all? Sometimes a part of your clothes is torn. You are not like saying it all. Because your mind is there. Your mind is set. The attention and affection is there. I'm serious. But I remember that time, you know, you are thinking, ah, everybody's seen that my shoe. Oh, no, no, see that. Nobody's saying it. It's not like you mention it. People not say, okay, ah, okay, your shoe is, uh, 
have, <laughs> you know, it's done. So sometimes I find that what thing that everybody's looking at you, somebody even really noticing you. And that they are seeing your beautiful face that they are appreciating you. Hallelujah. Of course, there are times that actually you see some clothes that this is a uniform. Just that then you see this person a far off. That is brother so and so coming. Amen and amen and amen. All right. I have watches like that in UI. Most people see me like that. No, this boy they were from afar. <laughs> so so he said you're not able to receive it. So there are things that we are not expressing, or that we are not expressing because why our capacity to receive. And that's what my issue with teaching of people understand the issue of the word and the spirit. They are not able to receive. There are things that is like things that are more like to you, but they are reality in God. If somebody had an expression at the time that the shadow was healing the sick, if not that Peter had an expression, you will not believe it. Am I talking to us? And that's part of the laws of life. So I don't know how the particular of the Holy Ghost how to express things in that expression. Now let's go beyond sin now. Let's see what the Holy Ghost has done from Old Testament to the New Testament. The man they had was when Jesus has not died. Now that Jesus has died, you have access to almost what we have seen from old into the new. Must speak it to us. So there are things that you are not going to be able to receive. So you are able to receive it for you. So you are not able to receive it. And even now, you are still not able. So this church that we see that we call a gifted church, Paul said a student with me, that are things that they cannot receive. And that says that for you are still carnal. So the baby Christ is what? Still carnal. For when there is what? Envy. There is what? So every time you see yourself display envy, you are walking baby wood. You are not growing up. When there is what? Strife and division among you. Are you not carnal? Giving like mere men. So if you are looking at some life, you're not a mere man. Am I talking to us this morning? I'm being saved Are you with me? So be like what? That means there's a place that you touch in this life, you will be in a place that strife will almost be impossible. And people don't believe that, that is possible. And people that don't believe that you cannot be envious. That you don't believe it is a problem of your own. There's a place you can get to your work with God that when you see people do well around you, you your first action or reflex of thought is rejoicing. Do you get my point? Rejoicing. Do you get my point? It, it, when well, you're not like that, something's wrong. Which is why we need to really sit down with God's word. So you, you see, because the baby like mere men. So the baby Christian has a major problem. Being like a mere man. And we don't live in the reality of what God has provided. He said, for when one says, I'm of Paul, another, I'm of Apollo, are you not Kana? Also talking about where people have their choice preachers. He said, are you not Kana? May we have understanding in the name of Jesus. So in this place, I want us to say one thing there, that when you begin to go beyond babyhood, it's not measured by praying tongues. It's measured by the word. By what? So when they said to them, I write to you, Young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. And I told us that I've written to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you. So the abiding of the word gave them strength. Now, without strength, and you have overcome the wicked one. Are you with me? Are you with me? And you have what? So, because one position said something yesterday, I, I was really like, this, this, that, now this is really the issue. That people are praying, longer words in tongues, but their longer prayer is detrimental to their development in Christ. Because why? It's not from a place of accurate understanding of the word, without distortion, and they many don't have the word in them. And that's what I say to a lot of people. When you tell me your dreams, and you know, sometimes you have to just be a bit patient. Some tell me their dreams, and I'm like, this kind of dream, you just discard it. Don't even be worried about it. Imagine that I'm eating my dream. And I thought that somebody gave me food to eat. If I eat my dream, I wait. I mean, that somebody that one wish would be powerful enough to come and give me something to eat in my dream. I she crazy or whatever the person is. Collision any now. I work together. I leave it up once. I eat and I'm fine. You come nutrient in my body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what that I ate in the dream. The person not leave it. The person is not fearful. The person not say ha. Ah. Today, because I've eaten your dream. 
the way of understanding in the name of Jesus. So, when you don't have the word of God, Satan will bring you dreams. So, this will happen in your dreams, and then you have good to become fearful or necessarily. That's why we need to really be in the face of the world. So, the measure, so the growth is connected to the world. Peter said, the systemic of the world, there will be growth thereby. So, the young man who have overcome the wicked world, who are strong, is based on the world. So, meaning that, I don't, um, personally, I mentioned that he, he, he believes in praying by the word. Do you, did, did you hear that? So, a major point is that majority of us have not sat down, or majority of you have not sat down with the word for yourself. I'm not talking about the one that you're able to just quote, or you're able to quote it. It's beyond quoting. That is, you know the word and you know it very well. Are you with me? Now you know it very well. So, we need to go back and start with the word. So, the, let me put it this way. I want to use the word quantity. And maybe quality. The quantity and quality of the of life that will be expressed by you as a believer depends on the richness of God's word in your life. Are you with me? Are you with me? And that means it will affect your prayers, it will affect your interaction with your environment, it will affect diverse expression of your life. Shout the word of God. So it's really important. Very important. Why have not encouraged the word retreat? Because I feel like, okay, well, actually, word retreat for me is, is easier than prayer retreat. But both are very important. Although I still believe that, even the longer I pray that we are talking about, I don't think it's only really possible to do 16, 18 hours prayer in the Holy Ghost with the wrong motive or with a kind of contamination. Because there's a strength also for prayer. Do you understand? I, I, I don't believe like I just wake up and say, I'm praying 10 hours today, and then I'm able to pray 10 hours. I don't, I don't think it works that way. So sometimes when people are saying it, I'm also asking myself, does this person really pray longer hours? Because if you pray longer hours, you will know that if the energy of the Spirit has, is not helping you, you cannot do it. Are we together? So sometimes I also feel that people that have mentioned longer hours are related to negativity, that they don't really do long hours. Hello? Hello? Okay. I have not seen how you can pray longer hours in certain states. Maybe you have strife. I don't think there's no possible. That's why you see, you know, Leonard Ravon Eve, he said, you cannot be praying and be singing at the same time. So that one, I pray, you know what he's saying. A real praying person, after prayer, cannot be combined with his life of sin. Do you get this point? Do you get this point? So, the young men here, before maturity, they were called, they said, I've written to you, um, let me read verse 14 again, I've written to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. So, the level of knowledge of God is what that means maturity. Are we together? Level of what? Of knowing God, you know, long time maturity. That's it, I've written to you, young men, because you are strong. This strength, the result of what? The word of God does what? Abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Do we see that? Do we see that? So this will make us to pay attention much more to the word of God. And then we should have a kind of inspiration, or let me say, the steering towards prayer should be a state that comes from you fellowshipping with the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I found out that from the word, you will have energy to pray. You have energy to pray. If there are seasons of encounters, the encounters will come to you effortlessly. Not that you are seeking it. It will just happen. Things will just happen around you effortlessly. Amen. Amen. Is anybody having pain on your right shoulder? This, this side, like this. Everybody like that? From this elbow side to this side. Everybody like that? You have pain there? Are you? Is everybody like that, please? I saw around there. Everybody like that. There's someone having pain from this side. This right hand side. Who's that person? Because God is just healing the person and that's I'm asking. So you are healed. You are healed. You are healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are helping in the name of Jesus. So I have to pay attention to God's word. You should do what? 
should pay attention to God's word. And um, if you go back and listen to the message that I've been sharing, everything, you will see so many possibilities available such that you want to run the rest of this year, pay more attention to scriptures, pay more attention to solitude, pay more attention to see you work in the quality of life that God has you know, provided for us. Maybe have understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. So how else of it and pray? Is it clear what I say? Is it clear? Is it clear? All right, let's just have feet and pray. Ephesians 1 from verse 17. I said this already that this prayer in Ephesians 1 should be a prayer that we pray actually almost every day, shut every day. Because everything we're talking about now, this is the major key to it. This is a major, major, major key to it. Major, major key to it. You know, when Pastor Shita was talking about um, I'm resurrection and the life, and was explaining that the part that the church has captured thus far is the part that says that I'm the resurrection. I said to the wife that even that part of the resurrection has not been captured yet enough. Not how good that I'm the life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want, us to, I want us to pray with that scripture and I want to just I mean, bring understanding to it again as I read from here. I'm reading from NKJV. Um, amen. So I'm trying to okay, trying to get my eyes accustomed to this place. Alright. Paul mentioned from verse 16, John says to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. That's the old church. Pray for your old church. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, that means the God the Father, I thought about God the Son, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. In what? So I say this that Paul is not asking that they should have cars, he's not asking that they should get married on time, he's not asking that there should be no delay in their average children. But Paul is praying that they go to a place of spirit of wisdom and revelation. In the knowledge of him. You know, this was very important. Hallelujah. You know, there are many things that are connected to getting this dimension of life. And I said that, you know, that the highs of your understanding be the lighting that you may know. Shout that I may know. What is the hope? You see, hope here again of his calling. Now, the you that I see what person was really talking is that if the hope to you is becoming the most successful medical doctor. On planet Earth, you are open this road. Do you get the point? Do you get the point? So today and yesterday, did you get the hope? Did you get the hope? Now, is that hope powerful enough to cause you to be committed and convicted for God? So I need to go back to studying and making that hope until it's a force in your spirit. Do you get my point? It's a, it's a force in your spirit. That means that it's the place you are in the place you are so convinced about it. The reality is done on you, and then you are able to live in a corner. I mean, properly. So it's the hope of your calling. Now, this place now is a major issue because why? Many have a distorted view of that hope. Hallelujah. Many have what? So an accurate representation or picture of that hope will not help, and that shows why. You, you will see, I don't know whether you have said this before, people are trusting God for a particular thing in their life. Let's take, for example, when we left school, let's say job. And they're really trusting God for this job, first year, second year. You will see them in church in the morning. They are there almost all week. They are just there. They are available. Very available. Are we together? Then this big job comes. And then you don't see them again around. Now, I don't, I'm not saying the shoe. They'll be active physically like, like before. But well, it shows that something has gone cold in their life. And they will ask them, we are not see you again. But that commitment, you know, I can't tell you, ah, is the job that God has blessed them with. So it's like the blessing, you know, made them to become cold believers. Are we together? Because why? The hope was wrong. And that's why the gospel tells you that, you know, just come to Jesus. And you come to Jesus. You ride the best car, you come to Jesus, you have your house, it's also a place. It's not the gospel. Truth be told. Is that what? Because all these Gentiles have it. 
if that's your, if that what Jesus will give, your church cannot convert a Dubai believer. I mean, a Dubai Muslim. Hello, because in Dubai they don't need to have that kind of hope for them to have the reality of it. Am I speaking to us? So even all your hope is about is about how you build that powerful house. Hello, it's nothing. There are people that don't know God and that they won't pray and they will not be illegal and they will build it. That means they are not going to steal. They will build a powerful house. In fact, many of the footballers who are not born again tell you that I'm many more money than you. Some of them can buy houses in every two, two months. What are you hearing? Do that make sense to us? That makes sense to us. If you have an understanding of Jesus. When, when, when we have this reality, when riches come into, your, into to you, when I say riches, not just money, in that expression, the riches will be used to affect your environment to draw people's attention to the Lord. I want to say that to us. So, the hope of this calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe? According to what the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ, what did he do? What so you see, that is connected to the of life. This is what connected to what means of life because that are the only spirit who raised Jesus from the dead it is the glory of the Father. Are we together in Romans 6 4 and Romans 8 11 is the spirit that quickened our mortal bodies. Also, with Jesus from the dead. Am I talking to us? So, why that this is connected together? So, this prayer is the prayer that when you pray it, you can actually begin to rise to walk in those of life. Because why? Your sight will be calibrated by the correct hope. Hello? You have understanding in the name of Jesus. Which you walked in Christ, where you raised him from the dead, and seated him where? At his what? Right hand, in the heavenly places. Far above what? All principality, all power. And might and dominion, every name that is named, not only in this age, but also what the wish is to come. And he put all things under what his feet, giving to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the face of him, who fills all it all. Now, you just need to understand the that we have learned in the Holy Ghost just in one or two minutes over this. Just pray the Holy Ghost. You have understanding. Can we just do that very quickly? Very quickly, yes, Lord. Braco, Sophidesh. In a mark at the yard to Bali, K to Madi Yadize, break Zuta Badi Yad Zeta Bali Gadi Zata Badi Yaste, break a shake at them, a dia Badi Yad Zeta name, a dia Malagadosia, break a tono so tobacchiados, break a viso to be at a baste, bring the mazu for key, zip the din, enzy, mana zuya, yes, Lord. Brakos, Soto, Brindos, Sofridesh, Abidesh, Brit, Zita, Nag, Zita, Madi, Yana, Mazuto, Libida, Badi, Yashte, Brekoto, Soto, Badiyash, Bretopo, Soto, Badiyash, Shabara, Bada, 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 Badiyash. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. One of my prayer for us is that we come to a place of personal revelation of the power of the written word from which the river flows in a way that we will be committed to that word. Because see, growth in the kingdom is based on you, you know, being rich in the word of God. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. He can dwell there poorly. Are we together? So I've written to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you, and therefore, you are empowered to overcome the wicked one. If you have understanding in the name of Jesus. Let's have a seat. And we appreciate Baba Biko is in our midst. Uh, I, really, I really pray that we we'll take all that we are learning into our hearts. That in the, in the, in the morning was talking about that the you know, God Papa him. I was struck a bit with sleep today. Because I've not really rested well. God have mercy on my body in the name of Jesus. And myself, so I have mercy, don't worry, I will rest. So the pastor has not rested. I will rest this week in the name of Jesus. I will rest today. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I 
I'm rest now. All these are so much. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm rest this week. So, so, so the part I really caught very well was that part of God powering him. So, I, you know, it's related to intimacy with God, related to living right before God, related to being desirous to please God. I want us to get that. So, that you don't just go just pamper you. Some of you, if you are pampered by God, that pamper you will cause a valor for you because you are not ready for the Lord. So, maybe I understand the name of Jesus. See, intimacy is very sweet. One of my, my pain in our is that we are, not, we are not taking responsibility for our growth in God. I'm not saying, you know, I learn from people. Let's learn from pastors, let's learn from leaders. But take a responsibility to sit down, to also grow. Don't just hear a message. Go back and read it. Read it. Read it for yourself. Open the Bible. Read the context. Read the passage for yourself. Amen. At that time of meeting, go back to each of the messages. Sit down with it. As some of us grow up, oh, we do a retreat, this retreat over, over, over a conference. Then you sit down with it. And then you now see things that the man of God doesn't even tell you. Are you with me? Then all that scriptures that it will break off. If the person has told a lie, or maybe someone from me know I said something, and you're not aware, why are you going back to study? The Holy Ghost will show you. How many says to us? The Holy Ghost will show you that this one no, is all true. <laughs> it will show you. And that's a very Christian attitude. The Lord is talking about Jesus. So once again this evening, Without waiting this time, let's also our feet as we honor and appreciate the grace of God upon Reverend Nicola Mosca's life as he comes to share God's word with us this evening. And I believe you will be blessed.